I'm going to start to quickly give you a tiny bit of an idea what we do, and then I'm going to give the ball to suck, and you'll see what happens. So, yes, go to the next slide to the actual. Okay, so this is our what we're going to go through. Um, I'm going to start with explaining about Epicode, and then Saki will go through these these outline. Okay. Yeah, so we don't go so deep about DevOps, but we go so deeper, a little bit principles, and then uh, I opened that demo case, what we have in the, our desk, but let's check it later on. Yes, so just to summarize every code real quick, um, we're working on four different, under four different categories, so basically under design, create, analyze, automate. What we are best known for is um, the DevOps side, so we're, we were um, found in 2005, and basically ever since then we've been automating things, we've been automating software development. After that, we've, uh, we've elaborated a lot, so now we're doing UX, UI design, we're doing um, um, customer surveys, we're doing uh, different kinds of, basically from the time that you have an idea of a service that you might use some sort of software or data, and we go all the way to the part where you actually bring your product to, you know, live audience, and then we go with, you know, automate everything in between that we can. The whole point is that we are working on doing all the things that are done manually right now, and our repetitive things, we're trying to automate that so that the people who are working are focusing on adding value and um, creating new things for the customers. Um, Right now we have about 235 people working for us. Last year we hired about 100 people, so we're, we're um, getting bigger quite, with a quite fast pace, and that's because of what Sake is gonna tell you soon. <laughs> the DevOps um, mind, mindset is something that is really, really taking off, and it's, it's everywhere now. Um, we've been doing DevOps since 2007. The actual DevOps term came a little, a few years later when we actually started doing it, but it's something that finally we had a word, a trendy word that we can put our, um, our um, whole actions under. Um, our turnover last year was 16 million. Uh, we have a lot of projects. We are uh, currently in six different places. We're in Sweden, we're in Gothenburg and Stockholm. And in, uh, in Denmark, we're in Copenhagen, and then Tampere and Helsinki. And we also have some activities in Beijing. Um, but now we actually just got an investment of six million, so we're going to go into international, um, to get more international in different countries, and that's our near future um, plan. So. But that's about a nutshell. I'll give the ball to you and run with it. There I am. I'm not the Docker captain, but my son is a Docker captain. I want to be the Docker captain, but let's see later on. Uh, I have played a lot with the Docker. You can find me from that web address behind of that DAG. There is my LinkedIn, there is our my slide. I probably share these slides also to that address later on. When we get that video out, I will put it in. So what is DevOps? Surely, explain to the DevOps, we have to get your software away from your developer laptop. It not bring the money to you in that laptop. It not bring the money to you even in the laboratory. It not bring money to you even in the package which is green. And it not give the money back to you. Even if that is an installation packet. It bring money to you when it's on the live. It's on the live mean that we have a server. And when we have a server, someone come in, take it offline, update it, and then hoo -hoo, we have new software version. But there was a downtime. Your service was down. And you lose a customer because it was down. That's why we need a load balancers. This is a load balancer. Traffic came in. We have a server. We have other server. We do this in the ethic code. We take other server away, update it, put it back, 
away, put it back. This is a DevOps. We have to get your code to the live every commit. And in every commit, we update and build that software and update it to the live. So now we have a system with the load balancer. We can put the most reverse there because we have a huge load. And when loads go down, we can take those servers away so we don't spend any more money to the cloud provider. Shortly. That is a thing why DevOps will bring that money and increase your revenue ten times what Symbi or Ville Kankainen say that that is the focus of the AI, that is the focus of the IoT. And DevOps is a tool how to do it. DevOps is also the tool how to do the things that, yeah, now I have a freezer, there is all of my food, those are frozen, but someone broken in and stirring it off, and that's why my food melts down. I'm the manufacturer of that freezer, and I get the bill from the, all of those customers because those food have to be put to the waste. And we have to get that security fix in as soon as we ever can, as quickly as we ever can. Nixu uh, yesterday morning explained that topic. But this is just one of the example. And one of the problem is IoT. How to do that whole thing with the IoT devices? How to develop software to the IoT devices as that way that when Comet is in, after a couple of the minutes, it's published it to the world and updated to the end of the device. It's easy in the cloud. But how about in the IoT device? So DevOps, development operations. We made the development, we create that code, and operations, we have to update it on the live. Let's put those together, automate everything be between those, and just play with it. Way how to maximize the time to market speed. So you are the winner of this whole IoT race when you can be front of everyone else. When the new features are published to the world before anyone else, then you are the winner. If you use the open source. This presentation is open source. All what I open in here, I can share to you. All of tools are open source. Our case in there is open source. Our I open that case to you. Then you will get that whole idea how to do this kind of complex things. So, innovative culture, you can, you, can, you can feel it. Learn process. Waste. Do you want waste at food? Why we waste things on the purposes where there is no meaningful, where there is no money value? Effective organization. I didn't ask from my boss, could I share that whole case to you? I, I, I share it to you. Sorry. <laughs> Extensive automation. Everything is automated. And that's why we can go to the live right away. And minimal monitoring. Yeah, now that freezer melt down. I have to get it ping about it. And then I know that something has to be happened because freezers in the world will melt down. So organization. This is a normal organization of the of the companies. We have a dev team, we have testing and we have ops team. Dev team made the code, test team tested, and ops team updated on the live. In the agile. We do things as this way, that yeah, we have a customer, we get those uh, features what we want to in. We, we, we descript those, put the tickets in, start to develop those, test those, publish those. Then we have a production which is alive and we get the value pack. 
In the DevOps, we modify it a little bit. Now it's a real feature. It's a feature-based development which will be published to the live right away when it's ready. Untested. Tested means that it's ready. Without testing, it is not ready. That's why test automation is the main part of that whole thing. So DevOps process. In the old style time, we use a waterfall. There was a silos and bricks walls between silos. There was no any cooperation between development and customer and development and operation. And there was no any kind of feedback from the operations to the customer. That's why we get the agile. And we do the cool things, but that's not enough. Here, we have that installation package already, or green build, woohoo, green build, when we get the money. In the DevOps, it looks like that. We have uh, things on the live, and that's why we will get that money back. There is a real cooperation between those parts which old days was a silos. We need a tool how to do this whole thing, but this is an ideology, this is a process. There is a tools. Everything based to the version control. So your development and those environments are in the version control. Your testing are in the version control. Your code analysis in the version control. Your binary baggages are published in the artifact. We have that kind of recorded management, example Jira, where we can put those pieces, what we want to publish to the world. And when those pieces goes uh, uh, over this pipeline, go to the acceptance test, we really test that are those requirements implemented as we required them. Everything is on the version control. So we have an installation package in here. Also our infrastructure, that cluster or IoT device or anything could be kick it up with the script. No manual setups anymore. Everything is automated. Also, these are automated that, that way that when we put the more nodes to the cluster, those will go automatically behind of the centralized monitoring or centralized logging. And yeah, I have here continuous delivery because now we have that package. Now we have to get it just to the online. And let's say that that online is quite hard to put in this picture, but I will show how it happened. So, if we think about DevOps, that continuous delivery, delivery is an easy part of the DevOps. It just means that when Comet came in, we have to compile it, we have to test it, and we have to package it. Then we have uh, continuous delivery. We have a package which could be delivered anytime. So there is no any out update to the device or to the cloud. It's not needed in the continuous delivery. That's why continuous deployment is the correct word of this kind of ideology, which is true DevOps. Uh, it will bring the complexity to the picture, because if you think about it, that you have tiny little IoT device. How on earth get that code to the there, to the live, without downtime and as soon as possible? There is uh, many way to do it. I introduce one way with the open source tools with the style how you can do it by yourself, 
but I will say that this is not the easy part, so we can help you. And if there is a human access before that update, that feature is updated, maybe you remember it and do it all the time, but at least I, I will forget it and my food will melt down. So, this is my case. It looked quite similar than before. Is it this one? Yeah. So, here is our coder. And that coder, in our case, it's, it's a button. When you push that button, it not do anything else than put the code to the git which is version control, where we can do uh, feature-based development. And there, then we can get the pipeline to that feature where we compile that code, where we test that code, where we do the security testing to that code, where we package it to the Docker container. It means that Docker image. We build it here. All of the green, uh, uh, blue arrows are Docker stuff. So we kick it up some kind of testing environment with the virtualization and execute test cases by Jenkins uh, against it. And when it's ready, we can publish that same image with the end-to-end -end tag to the Docker registry. We push it to the Docker registry. In the Docker registry, we have now that software which is tested by virtual way. Now we have here IoT gateway and behind of it we have those IoT devices. Gateway main functionality is a collect of data of the devices and send it to the cloud. We use it upside down. Bosch on the yesterday morning said that they drew that uh, free parking slot recognizing by using sensors from the car, sensors what exist already. We do exactly the same here. So, we use that IoT uh, uh, gateway as that way, that there is a feature, there is a container which not do anything else, that watch, is there a new image to me with this kind of DAC? Then, it update that image itself. What is the purpose of that container? That container purpose is a bring flashing tools and bring that latest software what put it in. And that's how it flash that IoT device. And as you can see, this IoT device is exactly similar than in our production. We test what we deliver. There is no any more that kind of situation that, oh, it worked in our testing, but not anymore in the lab. Then, when that is flashed by that container, our Jenkins realized that now it's updated. I can execute end-to-end -end testing against it. And when that feedback is ready, I can DAC that same image, which is DAC it end-to-end, to the production. And then rest of the IoT devices realized that there is new image to me. Let's update myself and then flash those IoT devices. And as you can see, amount of the gateways, it's not limited. Amount of the IoT devices is not limited. Only thing what's limit those is how capable this is service that pull, because that pull happened maybe parallel. So, do you build it by yourself or does Efficota help you? Maybe you need our help, but you can try. What else? That's all, quite simple. So, shortly, all of the IoD devices update itself. I don't need any more know how many devices I have there. 
those take care of themselves. I can put there even some kind of breakpoints or that kind of features that that container is available here which do that kind of updating, but it not do that up that flashing before I turn some bit on in some cloud. So I can control when that will go into the every of those services. I can control anything what I control with the software. So that's all. Real devices using end-to-end -end anything, end-to-end -end testing. We deliver as, we test as we deliver. Security, we can get those security up to date quite easily. We can get those software updates to the uh, IoT devices quite easily. Okay, yes, that end-to-end -end device. Okay, let's say that that gateway, it's auto story, but Hey, we have a story to you. Uh, flash tool updates. Yeah, we can update even those ones. And yes, it heard like it's a massive pull from the gateway. But if you know anything about Docker and you know about layering model of Docker, if you build up that your whole image correct way, it just pull that part of the image which has been changed with that commit. So you can even optimize it and that's why your IoT vehicle could be mine machine in the open mine which go to the under, under gave sometimes and come to the under satellite in a couple hours of day. We have to check what kind of device you have and we can put it behind of that whole thing. This, this was like, the device end was just an example. And yeah, your, yeah. Your main yeah. contribution is still... Yeah, if, if you check our demo case, our software is uh, blinking dead. And our IoT devices is Arduino with blinking lead. So let's replace those both with your product.